Welcome to Tony Tone Barbecue. I'm Tony. This video is going to be about using an offset smoker and maintaining a slow and low cooking temperature in a range of about 225 to 250. In there and pull. Well, yeah, I'd say that's tender because <laughs> this is incredible. Mm. Offset smokers are freaking awesome and they make the best barbecue because you can burn real wood in them. Trouble is, most people don't have the patience or the resource to figure out how to use them properly. If you don't have the patience for it, I suggest maybe switching to microwaving or something because barbecue is all about patience. As far as resources is concerned, well, I'd like to see if I can be that for you. So I've been working out here trying to put together some of the, the tips and tricks that make the biggest difference in working your fire which is the most important thing when it comes to using offset smokers, figuring out how to make that firebox there produce the type of smoke and heat that you need to produce that really awesome barbecue that you're looking for. Trust me, if you really learn how to work that fire and manage that temperature and get the right quality of smoke, everything else becomes easy. So focus here first, learn how to work that fire and get that temperature to do exactly what you want it to do. Okay, what we're covering in this video right now. First, I'm going to demonstrate how to build a fire in an offset smoker and maintain a temperature appropriate for slow and low smoking. And I'm going to be using real wood. Yes, actual cuts of oak wood, which I know a lot of people struggle with. We're going to start off with a little bit of lump coal just to get the fire going. But once that's done, we're just going to be using actual wood. It's not that hard to do. We're going to be uh, covering several key points along the way, like preheating, smoke quality, dealing with temperature fluctuations and temperature range. Secondly, and more of a byproduct, I'm going to demonstrate how working an offset smoker the right way can produce an incredible slab of ribs and just how simple and easy it really can be. So you'll get to see the results at the end of the video. So make sure you watch to the end. If you subscribe to my channel, you notice I have several videos on the topic of fire management. And there's two reasons for this. Reason number one, nothing is more important. Recipes, rubs, sauces, techniques, cuts, none of that comes close to the importance of the fire. And you'll see what I mean when these ribs are done. The second reason is because my videos are based on your comments and questions. My goal for every video is to be better and more helpful based on what you want. So thank you for watching. Thank you for your comments and questions and I appreciate you very much. So what we're working with today, this is the Char Griller Grand Champ XD. I paid $549 for this at the Home Depot. I don't sell these. This is not a sponsored or promo video. I just want you to know what it is so you know what we're working with in case you need that info. Okay, I should say this in every clip. Patience. Great barbecue takes patience. Be patient. So what I'm doing right now is I'm starting off with a chimney full of lump coal. This is a Weber chimney charcoal starter. And I have lump coal in there, not charcoal. And I'm going to start off with a lump coal. This is the prep process, the preheat process. Barbecues need to be preheated. Smokers need to be preheated, just like your oven needs to be preheated. It's a normal thing. Don't rush this part. I'm gonna put this in here, and I'm gonna use this lump coal to start bringing up the temperature. Now we're gonna be cooking with oak wood but we're gonna start off and bring the temperature up with lump coal. We can also use the lump coal as a backup if things go sideways, get really out of, out of whack during the cooking process. It's not a big deal. We're gonna to try to avoid that today. But the reason we can use lump coal is because lump coal is just wood that's already been burned down. You don't have to worry about it giving off bad smoke from, from sap and moisture and stuff like that being in the wood. So it's a nice safe option for you. It's not as great as using natural wood like this oak. You can smell the difference when you're burning this outside. You can, you can smell it in the air. That smells completely different than what this smells like when it's burning. So that's gonna affect the flavor of your food. This doesn't have a whole lot of scent. This smells amazing. 
and this is going to give your food a lot of flavor. So what we're going to do is we're going to build up a temperature beyond what our cooking temperature is going to be. Uh, when I say beyond, I mean our cooking temperature is going to be 225 to 250 degrees, roughly right in there. Now, I warn you not to get too caught up on precise numbers. Barbecue isn't a science about precise numbers. It's more of an art. So we're going to take, use this pile along with some, some wood to build a temperature that's 275, 300, 350. Go as high as you want to go. Uh, I've had temperatures in the prep process over, over 400 degrees. That's okay, because you're going to come down from that. You go high, and then you're going to kind of let it settle down to your cooking temperature. So don't rush this part, okay? Don't go sticking your meat in too soon. Let it go high, and then let it settle down. And the reason why we do that is because by letting the temperature settle down, it, it's going to get the entire rig nice and hot from end to end, and then it's all going to settle down so the temperature is going to be nice and even from side to side plus give you an opportunity to clean up your grates and everything while everything's nice and extra hot so this part of the process can take anywhere from half an hour to an hour hour and a half kind of depends um depends on how big of a pile of lump coal you put in here so don't put in too much you also might want to try to avoid some of the giant chunks of lump coal that come in your bag um, because those will take a while longer to burn down but we're just gonna let this pile burn down a little bit here and make sure that your vents are wide open i've got the side vent over here open I've got the stack over here wide open and i've got this lump coal positioned all to the right side close to the air intake and i'm also going to put in here a couple of my splits um, i usually do two or three so put them over here with enough distance between the burning pile of lump coal here and the wood so I don't catch those on fire. I like to use a few different sizes. For this part, make sure you don't use pieces that are too big. A couple of nice small ones. Because we're going to let we're going to use those to help bring that temperature up to that high point that we want i'm going to take one more piece i'm going to add it right there so we've got our pile of burning wood that's going to get the temperature up to a higher than we want temperature and then we've got these pieces that are going to get really really hot so they're going to go on the fire later on when it's time to start cooking Okay, we're just gonna close that up and we're gonna let that temperature start to rise. Now, during this part, go do whatever you wanna do. This now is a good time to go ahead and start prepping your meat, getting it ready to go on the smoker. So how much wood do you need to uh, put in your firebox to get started? Well, a lot of that's gonna depend on the size of your smoker, how heavy it is, and also the weather conditions outside. It's really cold today. So um, I went ahead and added just another kind of larger chunk of lump coal in there and another and a kind of thin split of wood there that'll burn down pretty quickly after it gets going because temperature was kind of coming up a little slower than I want it to. Uh, we're at two, just a little over 200 right now on these gauges so i just want it to kick up a little bit so that's why i add that on there so you have that flexibility you just have to kind of gauge that on your own you got to get a feel for it okay okay so it's been a little over a half hour since the wood started burning down and uh we were over 300 for a little bit now we're down closer to about 275 on that gauge showing about 250 over here showing about uh 240 over here let's have a look at how the pile of wood's looking see it's burning down really nicely and we're developing that nice bed of coal there so we are about ready to go ahead and throw the meat on this rig while this thing was going through the preheat process i was inside getting these ready these are pork spare ribs i trimmed down to st louis style no complex rubs today don't need it to prove how delicious meat out of an offset smoker can be we're just seasoning with salt and pepper today 
when these go in the smoker the lid's going to go down and i'm not going to raise the lid for at least five hours i'll probably cook these for six hours i won't be wrapping them i won't be saucing them no spraying no spritzing no mopping this is going to be pork ribs flavored and tenderized by the smoke from from uh, that oak and a little salt and pepper i highly suggest you try this especially if you're just starting out we've settled down to cooking temperature and i've got the ribs on the grill here so we're just going to go and close this up we're going to leave that down for six straight hours i know packer it's going to be a while okay why so many gauges we have one two three four well here's why your fire is coming from over there this is not a microwave the heat's over here it's cold outside it's a little tiny bit windy right now the wind just picked up and so that's going to affect the way the heat flows through this thing some parts will be cooler than other parts heat rises so the temperature is almost always higher up here than it is down here and as you can see here this guy is a digital wireless bluetooth that's being sent to my phone it's showing 240 degrees right now and the probe for that is right here on the grate at the back so it's right there this one over here is showing just under 250 this one over here is showing about 260 and this one up top is showing about uh, close to 300 about 280 so why the difference well this one is a great level right in the middle this one is uh, also a great level off to the side over here this one is really close to the firebox right here so that's why it's higher than 250 and these ones are at 240 and this one is up here at 280 where the heat is going like this it's coming in and just going up and the heat rises to the top and goes out the stack that's a good thing is that's what creates that draw that we want so that's why we had different gauges because i want to know do i want to have my meat over here closer to the fire where it's a little bit hotter do i want to have it over on this side where it's a little bit cooler if i put something on that second rack up top it's going to be a little higher temperature zone up there it's just for my own knowledge so i can do whatever i want to do temperature what temperature do we want to run and how important is it okay remember don't get too caught up on very precise numbers okay some recipe might say you need to you know cook your ribs at 225 degrees for six hours well you're not going to maintain 225 degrees i'll tell you that right now your oven doesn't even do that if you listen to your oven you'll hear it turn on and turn off the temperature comes up to a certain point and then it turns off and then when the temperature falls back down to a certain point the oven turns back on and brings the temperature back up and then it turns off and brings the temperature back down okay that's just the way it works when you put a new piece of wood in here and it starts burning hot well the temperature is going to go up and as that wood burns down a little bit the temperature is going to slowly fall that's okay you don't need to run at a certain temperature for a certain amount of time this is totally an art don't even stress about it you're going to have temperature fluctuations and it's not going to ruin your cook now if you are trying to do ribs slow and low for six hours and or you're trying to do a brisket until it reaches an internal temperature of 205 degrees you don't know how long that's going to take you can't do it by time and if you run it at 350 degrees 400 degrees for that entire time it's probably going to dry it out it's not going to come out very good you need to do it slow and low so if you run it at 225 250 and it bounces back and forth between 200 and 275 for that entire time you're going to be fine i promise okay a giant temperature swing like that is not a big deal i typically run anywhere from if my target temperature is 225 I'll be at 215, I'll be up as high as 275, but it doesn't stay at 275. If I get beyond 275, I start worrying a little bit. Maybe I'll take, uh, I'll open up the firebox, a little bit of heat out, or open up the lid, a little bit, let a little bit of heat out. Maybe take out a piece of wood if I need to. Maybe I accidentally threw in a piece of wood and it caught on fire and, and uh, you know, or my, my backup. This has happened before where my backup wood over here tipped over, caught on fire, and now my temperature spikes if that happens it's going to happen for a few minutes it's not a big deal usually i just write it out you know it might hit 280 and i'll watch okay it's going to settle and it does it starts coming back down to 275 260 250 and i'm good 
a few minutes like that isn't going to ruin anything. So don't stress. Just chill. It's all good. Remember, patience. Relax. This is a fun, relaxing time. So don't worry about it. Temperature fluctuations are normal. You're not going to maintain a constant temperature. But you can do 215 to 240, 220 to 250 very easily for an extended period of time without a lot of stress. And turn out great barbecue. What about dirty smoke? What if you do run dirty smoke? Is it going to ruin your barbecue? Well, it depends on how long you, you run that smoke. All right, just a few minutes here and there is not a big deal. Yeah, this, isn't, this isn't science, remember. It's, it's an art. So a few minutes of dirty smoke is just not going to make, it's not going to be a big deal. Okay. If you run it for hours, for half the time you're barbecuing, you're going to have a different flavor. You're going to have a, a, a harsh flavor on your meat. It's going to be overly smoky. You might not like that. Maybe you do like it, whatever that's up to you. Okay. But you have to understand what causes the dirty smoke so that you know how to deal with it. So a few minutes here and there, when you add a new piece of wood, no big deal. Don't stress over it. Just let that wood continue to burn and the smoke will improve. What affects smoke quality? So airflow is the number one thing. You need to make sure that you have good airflow, that your wood is getting the amount of air that it needs to burn properly. And if you see inside here, that piece of wood is burning nicely. And if you look really carefully, it almost looks like there's a fan blowing on the wood right there. It's actually kind of going away from us right now, away from the, the air intake. So some people like to leave this door open. I'll show you what happens. Open the door. The wood is still burning nicely, but it's kind of settled. It's not blowing like it was a second ago and losing a little bit of smoke out the door here, a little, little bit of heat. But if I close this up, now it looks like a fan just kind of kicked on and it's blown at the wood. That's because in this particular smoker, it's sealed nicely. The air is coming in over here and it's being drawn, literally being pulled this direction and being pulled up into the main cooking chamber to the only place it can go out, which is through the top of the stack right here. And this stack is creating draw. The entire thing is creating draw because the air intake is way down here and heat rises. So heat is naturally pulling the air up, up, up and out that stack right there. So you've got great airflow and that's keeping that wood burning nice and hot and clean. So you're getting the right kind of flavor. Other things that affect smoke quality the uh, size of the splits. If you have a split that is way too big for your smoker, you're going to, it's going to smolder. It's not going to burn as nice and clean. So make sure you size your splits appropriately for your smoker. See, this is not a very big piece of wood. And that's the, those are the splits that I have inside this firebox. Also, the quality of your fuel. If your wood is not seasoned properly, it's going to smolder. So make sure that you have good seasoned wood for your smoker. Preheating. If you take a cold piece of wood and put it in your smoker, it's just gonna take longer for it to catch on fire. That's just the way it works. But if you get this nice and hot by either leaving it on top of your smoker, if you've got this little plate here like that, you can usually stack it on pretty much anything, even if it's round. Put that there, this thing is hot. This is gonna get hot. If you wanna get it super hot, do like I do and have your fire to one side closer to the vent and have your wood over to the left away from the fire so it can get super hot and you can see it was turning black it's already starting to get hot enough to even burn so it lights on fire very quickly and you will minimize the amount of dirty smoke you get adding a new piece of wood this is why it's so important to preheat your wood right now. We're gonna put this on here. We've got that nice bed of coal there. And that piece of wood is gonna light up on fire in just a few seconds. You see it's giving off just a little bit of smoke there. And there goes the flames. And those flames are going to create more heat for your smoker to keep that temperature consistent. It's very faint, bluish, good quality smoke. This is the kind of smoke that gives your barbecue great flavor. So another thing that affects airflow and smoke quality is ash buildup below your fire. So 
you uh, typically your your offset smokers like this will have a grate that you burn your wood on the really big giant ones sometimes they do it right on the metal but none of these kind they're just not built to do that so if you do get a lot of ash buildup underneath here because you've been doing like a you know 10 12 14 hour cook you might need to do something like take a rod like this old screwdriver and just kind of sweep underneath and clean it out smash it down ash smashes down very easily we're nowhere near that point right now but it's something i wanted to point out you want to make sure that you have good airflow below your burning wood so that that wood can burn properly doesn't get smothered out by the way if your smoker doesn't come with a grate that's that's big enough and far enough away from the bottom of your smoke firebox to allow ample airflow like my old smoker does um, just get a different grate right raise it up a little higher so when do we add more wood how much wood do we add and how often do we have to add it uh, those are some very common and kind of difficult to answer questions so first one when do we add more wood we add it when the temperature falls below the range that we're willing to accept <clears throat> we're at 243 right now we don't need to add wood if it drops down to about 215 add wood how much wood do we add well you add enough to bring the temperature up to your range if you add too much you'll end up outside of your range you'll end up with a temperature that's too high or you might end up with bad smoke quality if you add too little well the temperature will come up uh, a little bit for a short time and then burn back down and you'll be back down to a low temperature you don't want that so how often well, that's the tricky part it really is how often you add wood depends on a lot of different factors it's going to depend on the size and the thickness of your offset smoker that's a one main thing and the airflow is another main thing a good quality offset smoker will maintain a temperature longer than a less expensive lighter weight offset smoker especially one that has um, poor airflow like where there's uh, maybe it's a two-part where air is kind of coming out of areas where you don't want it to come out of a bigger nicer one will hold heat better because well thick steel takes longer to cool down and another major factor is the ambient temperature outside if it's a really really cold and windy day it's going to completely be different than on a day when it's nice and calm and warmer in the summertime when you're barbecuing uh, you can go with a smaller pile of wood smaller splits in the winter time when it's colder well you've got the cold temperatures just taking the heat away from your metal trying to cool it off so you might need to run a bigger fire it's only about 50 degrees today only and i know it's a lot colder in other places and this is the size of fire that i'm running right now to maintain that temperature of uh, range that i'm looking for between 225 and 215 it's doing a perfect job it's something that you have to experiment with and get good at it's going to take some time to learn but just experiment with different splits of wood you know this guy here is only about six inches long you know if i have i have splits anywhere from about four inches to six inches of various thicknesses so that way if i need to put in a big split like this no well, great i'll put it in if uh if i'm running uh, my coal bed's kind of starting to dwindle out a little bit and I need to run a, a few small thin splits I might get away I might put something like this in there uh, maybe a few of these so they'll they'll light up fast and burn down quickly so I'll rebuild my coal bed Packer you need to get out of there so a little tip picking up cooking firewood from a local firewood distributor is a great way to save some money and get a better quality wood for your offset smoker you just typically will have to cut it down to size because you're going to get big chunks like this so a miter saw and a hand axe make quick work of that So you can see it's not that difficult to put together a batch of uh, wood splits of various lengths and sizes here. This is uh, more than enough to take care of a six to eight hour cook. 
thought this is worth mentioning too. It rained the other day and I wasn't expecting that. So this, I forgot to cover it up. This pile of wood got wet. So what happens if your wood gets wet? Well, it's not a big problem really. It usually just takes two or three days for it to dry out. It's just the surface that gets wet. So you see here, this piece I just cut and inside it's all nice and dry. And besides that, the way I preheat the wood, that little tiny bit of moisture on the outside is gonna dry right up right away. So it's not gonna be a problem and I won't be creating any dirty smoke with that. So no big deal if the wood gets wet address something else that's been brought up bark some people like to knock this bark off yeah yeah the bark is blocks the chemicals and blah blah blah, blah, blah. so um yeah if you want to go through the trouble of ripping the bark off your wood knock yourself out uh does it make a huge difference uh no not really okay what about vents position so when you're cooking with actual wood you want to keep your vents as open as possible. I've got my intake vents wide open. I don't have the door open because I like the the effect that having the this hole this size is actually making it a wind tunnel and blowing the wood, keeping it burning nice and hot. And then your exhaust vent. Also, you want to keep it wide open. This allows for the best airflow so that your wood burns cleanly. This is with wood, with charcoal, with lump coal. You don't need to do that. You can choke down the vents because you're not going to get dirty smoke. Now, if your fire starts raging out of control and your, your temperature is going way higher than you wanted to, maybe you're up to 280, one little trick is you can close off your exhaust vent just a little bit, like usually just like a 25% you know, closing, you know, keeping it 75% open is enough to slow the airflow down enough to help calm that fire down without causing too much dirty smoke. The less airflow you have, the dirtier that smoke will become because the wood will start to smolder instead of burn nice and clean. And you're not going to see the effect happen immediately. It takes a few seconds or a few minutes, but it will happen. So you want to keep this vent open if you can. So just be careful with the amount of fuel that you put into the firebox so you don't have to do that. You want to keep your vents wide open when you're using wood. So here's an example of how weather can affect your cooking temperature and what's going on. So it, the wind picked up and it's kind of died down, but the wind got a little crazy for a minute and my fire was raging out of control. I was up about 300 degrees. So I tried that little trick of shutting this down a little bit, but it was having no effect. It was still going crazy. So what I ended up doing was I ended up coming over here and closing down the intake a little bit. I was uh, a little bit more than halfway a bit ago and then I opened it back up because the wind settled down and the temperature started settling down. So I, by, by blocking it from this end and leaving that end wide open, I was getting better results. The smoke that was coming out was looking better and the fire had settled down and it was still burning nice and hot as you can see here. Full burn, no smolder and that's great. So just be flexible and get to know your rig so you make the uh, you can make the right choice to to manage that temperature a little better so we're at 255 right now do we need to be worried no we don't we're just gonna let it burn away what do we got going on in the box over here let's open it for a quick second oh look big deal that's gonna calm down hey look we're already down to 254 don't worry about it don't stress just relax it's all good so here's another little tip for you a minute ago one of my backup pieces of wood actually caught up on fire so i needed to take it out so having a little tabletop like this weber kettle here is a nice little handy thing to have nearby so you can take that out throw that in there throw the lid on it smother it out you're good to go and then uh, get it back in the firebox later the coal bed the coal bed is a very important part of maintaining your temperature what happens if your coal bed starts to dwindle down to nothing that does happen Especially if you're running splits of wood that are maybe just a little bit too big, all the little pieces kind of start to burn away as it burns efficiently, and you don't end up with much of a coal bed. So that's why it's nice to keep a couple small, little tiny, thin pieces of wood in your box on standby, because you can add those. They're gonna jack the temperature up really quickly, and they're gonna burn really fast. And that's okay, but they're gonna leave behind some coal that you can use then to add bigger splits on top of that. And that's how you can rebuild your coal bed if it starts to fall apart. What about temperature fluctuations? We talked about that. Now, this 
is a history of the entire cooking process. This thing's been in running for almost six hours now, and you can see the bottom line here is 215 degrees, and the top line up here is 275 degrees. My goal is to have the temperature in between there, and as you can see, the chart there up and down, uh, most of the time it's right in between that range. There's been a few times when it's been below 215. There's been a couple times when it's been above 275. So um, how does that affect the cook? Well, uh, to keep watching and you'll see when I just pull these ribs out. Hey, it's been just over six hours and uh, it's time to open up and have, see how these ribs turned out. I'm excited about this part. Here we go. Oh yeah, let's pull this out. Look at the color. We got some exposed ribs. Yes, we've got a good couple slabs of ribs here. Now what about tenderness? That's, oh yeah, that is soft. That is so soft that if I don't use this long spatula, you can see this is just gonna fall. Yeah, that's how tender these ribs are. So uh, super flexible. I'm not gonna be able to just grab these with the tongs. If I'm not careful, they'll just fall apart. So I'm going to use this long spatula to take this, set them over here. All right. Here comes the other rack. There we go. All right. So this is the fun part and the part where your patience is really tested is uh, seeing how these ribs came out. Now, normally I'd be cooking to bring them inside and share them with, uh, with the family and friends, but uh, I did this video just to see how these ribs would turn out so I can show you how it works out when you run an offset smoker with using just wood and the quality you can get. So you can see here the color, they're beautiful. They're not, they're not black. That's a mistake that, that, you, that you could end up with if you're just burning the wood and, and choking it and not letting it burn right. You end up with really black looking meat and uh, that's not a good thing you'll you'll taste the difference this is a nice uh dark toasted color and uh i'm gonna go ahead and use this knife to cut through here probably don't need to use a knife aside here the meat looks beautiful and uh if i just take a fork here let's get this out of the way let's uh just poke in there and pull that comes apart nice and easy beautiful what about the meat um well yeah i'd say that's tender <laughs> that meat just fell right off that bone that is beautiful let me taste that mm. oh it's heaven i'm gonna check that out that is very very tender that's the thicker wrap what about the thinner one over here made a little bit of a mess so this dinner rack let's just pull that well <laughs> wow look at that just beautiful let me take this piece here now what about that that uh does it fall off the bone i mean yes i'd say so that is no wrap six hours straight using wood in the firebox only wood i never did add any extra lump coal or anything like that just ran straight oak wood burning it nice and clean and this is what you can expect and uh, what about taste mm. mm hmm Oh my gosh, tender, juicy, freaking delicious. So good, so good, so simple. Salt and pepper only, no fancy rubs, no basting, no, no mopping, no spritzing, no spraying, no butter, just salt and pepper inside that cooking chamber for six solid hours. And the flavor is freaking incredible. Start there, start here. 
start here, start adding flavors later after you know what this tastes like. And um, you may not want to start adding a bunch of other stuff to it because this is incredible. Mm, so good. So that's how it's done. I hope this has been very helpful to you. I appreciate you watching. And um, make sure you leave comments and questions. Sorry I'm talking with my mouth full. But um, leave your comments and questions. And uh, let me know what else I can do for you. Thanks for being here. Take care.